Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And I'm back out here in a state forest doing some practice with some survey work and things like that. And I thought what I'd do today is we'd talk a little bit about how to judge the height of a tree using only your ax and your pace count. Now, if you see that tree off in the distance, it's kind of leaning toward the road. So if that tree had to be cut down, it would definitely fall into the road. To circumvent that, you would cut the tree differently, probably hook it up to the winch of the Jeep and pull it this direction so that it fell alongside the road instead of into the road, have to be cut out of the road, it would already be down outside the roadway. If you're going to do that, you're going to know how far that tree is going to fall so that you can get your Jeep backed away from it far enough it doesn't fall on your Jeep or your vehicle or whatever you're pulling that tree with to pull it over to one side. Now, be that as it may, all we're really talking about here is judging the height of a tree. How we would cut it down, that's a whole other ball game, okay? What I want to do today is I just want to show you a quick trick with an ax that you can use and your pace count, and we'll verify that with a tape measure so that we can see what our actual paces are, okay? I've got a tape in the truck, 100-foot surveying tape. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our ax, Now, the reason I'm gonna use my ax is because my ax happens to have inch marks on the handle. Anything that's a ruler of some sort would work for this. I'm just using my ax again because I keep inch marks on the back of my ax. This is kind of my woodsman's measuring stick. And I did a video on this years and years ago, how to put these hash marks on the back of your ax with a hot file, very, very simple. So we're going to back away from that tree far enough that we can get the entire tree inside this ax from top to bottom. And then we're going to count marks from the top to the bottom where the bottom of that tree is. And we're about right here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 inches on the axe. We need to remember that. 14 inches. That number is going to be important. Now we're going to pace this off and see how far away we are. One. All right, so for me, that was 18 and a half paces. All right, so now we got to do some math. So we're going to convert all of this to inches today because the tape I have in the truck is actually 100 foot tape and the marks on my axe are in inches. So we're going to have to do some conversion with our normal pace count. Now, my normal pace count is 62 and that's moving with a purpose. Your amble pace is going to be different than that. But I actually stepped it out and moved with a purpose on this deal. So we're going to go with 62. So the first thing we need to figure out is how many meters that is per pace because it's based on a 100 meter length, that pace count, all right? So 1.6 meters per pace is what that works out to. When you figure 100 meters divided by a pace count of 62, that gives you 1.6 meters. Now you have to times that by 39.37 and that's 63.5 inches, okay? So 63.5 inches per pace. All right, that's what that's telling us. Every pace we take is 63.5 inches, and we'll verify that in a few minutes, all right? Now that we know that, we can take the 63.5, and we can times that by the paces of 18.5, and that tells us that we walked 1,165 inches with our paces, all right? And what we need to do with that is we need to divide that into feet. So we walked 97.12 feet to that tree. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide that in half. So we take that 97.12 and we divide that by 2. 
and that gives us 48.56. And we're going to times that by our multiplier on our axe. So we're going to times that by 14. That gives us 679.84. Divide that by 12. So we put that in feet. And that is 56.6 feet. I'd go ahead and round that up to 57. And say that I have to be at least 57 feet away from that tree. 60, 65 is much safer bet. But if I leave my truck where it's parked right now, is it far enough away from the tree? That's the question. So we need to figure out what it is from here to the tree and see if we're 57 feet away. And then we'll check our pace count from that. Okay, so picking this tape up and pulling it tight. We are 87 feet and we'll just call it two inches from the front of the tree from the bumper of my Jeep. If you remember right, we shot our first measurement with the ax from behind the Jeep off to the side. So that bodes pretty well for us saying that we were initially 90, what did we say here? I don't remember. We said we were 97 feet away from the Jeep. So I'd say that bodes pretty well. Okay, so this is where we took our first measurement with the ax and we laid the tape down from the front of my Jeep and we're standing at the back of my Jeep in the road. And so if you add about 10 feet to what we had on the measurement of the tree, you'd have about the distance we were standing away, which is very close to what we estimated when we were figuring this stuff out in our math, right? And so now what we wanna do is we wanna look at our pace count. One thing I'm gonna tell you right now is if you don't have any idea what your pace count is, you've never tried to check it, you've never laid out a 100 meter tape and walked it or whatever the case may be, and you just need to figure out your pace count really quick, I will tell you now that I wear a 31 inch inseam. If you times that by two, that gives you 62 inches per pace, all right? And when we did our math, that is what 1.6 meters comes out to, is about 63 inches per pace, all right? Give or take. Now, let's put the measuring tape on the ground, step it off a couple times and kind of average three readings and see where we actually are. I want to heel at the bottom of the tape here and we'll take one step, two steps and take the heel of that foot and we are at 66 inches. Well, 65. 65 on that one. All right, let's do it again. One, two. 65 again. One, two. 63. All right, so we got 65 twice, 63 once, split the middle of that, you're talking about 64 and a half, inch and a half off of what I say my pace count really is, all right? Now, you're not walking 100 paces on a whack there, you're only walking one. But I'm telling you now, that's close. So if you take my inseam times two, that's 62, we ended up about an inch off of that. So there you go. Now, there's one more thing that we can do here to kind of check our math and check our system to see how well it worked. We can take this same tree and use a tripod with a transit on it to measure a 45 degree angle to the tree from the transit itself. And that 45 degree angle will ensure that we have a 90 degree angle here so that the distance we are from the tree is the same as the height of the tree. We could do that with any compass that has a clinometer on it. It just wouldn't be as accurate. If you look at this, True arc, Brunton True Arc, it has a climbing meter built into it. And you're just going to basically look here and dial it in here and look at it in the mirror to dial that degree reading in and look up the base at that tree from where you're standing. You can do the same thing with a Sunto MC2, you can do the same thing with a Silver Ranger. They'll all work for this. They all have a built in climbing meter. But because we have a transit and a tape measure out here, we can be very accurate and see exactly how far our error was from what we did on the fly. All right, so we'll set our transit angle at 45 degrees here with the Vanner scale. We'll put that on 45 degrees. And then we will move that just a little bit more. It's not quite on 45. Whoop, right there. And then we just need to make sure that that bubble 
is level. That's why it has that secondary level in it for the kilometer. All right, we're gonna have to move forward some. Quite a bit. We're not quite level, there we go. And we're level at our 45. And now we need to move up a little bit further. Okay, now where we need to be on the transit, and the tree is up there. I'm zoomed in here. If I zoom out, you can see where it's at. All right, here's the transit. Now all we need to do is run a tape from the tree back to the transit, and that will be the height of that tree. Okay, to the tripod is about 50, 55 feet, nine inches. And you have to add the height of the tripod, which is probably about uh, three, three and a half feet. So that puts you about 58-ish. And we said the tree was 57 feet high. So we're about a foot, a foot and a half off with just an ax and a pace count. All right, I actually feel pretty good about that. We might've been two feet off-ish and nothing but an ax and a pace count. I'd say that's pretty good. I said overestimate anyway. So I said, let's bump it up to 60. It was definitely less than 60. So we were in good shape. And you could obviously make this easy if you had the room to walk backwards and you had a kilometer on your compass, you could make that very easy on yourself. However, you don't always have that option. And if you have more precise equipment, it's easy enough to use it. And we use it today to verify the results of an experiment, which worked out really well. Okay, guys, so remember when you're doing this stuff that you're estimating, okay? It's not gonna be perfect, but you can get pretty close with practice, and practice is the key to every skill, no matter what it is. Pace counting, navigating, survey work, estimating height, estimating distance, all of that stuff takes practice. We ended up pretty good today, as far as I'm concerned, and I would know that, you know, is my truck far enough away or not, or do I need to move it back? And I'm gonna overestimate that distance. And if I say that tree is X, I'm gonna add 10 feet to that at least to back my truck up before I hook up to that tree and try to pull it this direction when it's being cut down. So overestimating is a good thing. Maybe I just wanna make sure that that's a widow maker sitting there. And I wanna make sure it can't fall on my camp. So I'm gonna overestimate that distance so that I'm far enough away from it, I don't have to worry about it. Or if I needed to go across some type of a creek and I need to cut it down, a fast moving creek of some kind of fast moving small river and I need to cross it and use that log as a handhold all the way across in swift water, same thing. I'm going to overestimate the distance across and then I'm going to underestimate the tree because I want to make sure it goes across if I cut it down. I only want to do it one time. These are all just quick, easy scenarios that you may run across where you want to estimate the height of a tree. And we used that as an example today out here in, in a state forest. So I thought I'd make it easy on you guys. I know the math is a little complicated, but if you follow it slow, you'll get it. It's not that difficult. It's simple subtraction, division, and multiplication in this type of exercise, and it makes it very simple. I'm Dave Canterbury. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your views. I appreciate everything you do for our school, for family, for business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video in this series as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.